So no situation is the same twice. No. So nobody's an expert on exactly what you're going through except for you. Come mm -hmm. on. And if you want to get through it, you got to do it. You have to do the work. You mm -hmm. can listen to Trey's story and be like, man, that's inspiration how you ever, you know, right. came all of that. I want to be more like Trey. No, you need to be more like you. Come on. Like, I'm just thinking I did live the shit that ESPN was doing when they had me and was wild. They had one of them little circle joints. Like what are you talking moment. about when ESPN had you in? So they came in uh, when I did my interview, like when they did about my life, the ACC Network and ESPN did that together. So they brought a bunch of shit in. Like they had yeah, how have we never talked about that? Yeah. How, how have we never talked about that? I, I don't know. I don't can know. we talk about it? I'm going to fuck. Do you want to box about it or do you want to talk about it? We can talk about it. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> just fight him over his ESPN video. New celebrity boxing. This is Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. So yeah. yeah, dude, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Um, you're playing at Pitt, right? Yep. You win the Disney Spirit Award. Let's let's rewind. This is maybe this is like a Trey Tipton interview today. Refresh the, the viewers on who this man is sitting next to me right here. My friend who, you know, in this podcasting journey. Uh, came alongside right when I was ready to kind of throw in the towel or at least like rethink what I was doing. Um, poured a lot of life and gasoline on onto this thing and in the same thing. It was like lo a breath of fresh air, but at the same time you like ignited it. Mm. So it was like, you know, but you can't can't ignite it without oxygen. So maybe that's you were the mm. air. See what I did there? Yeah. Um, but dude, I couldn't imagine doing this show without you. It's it's definitely changed my life. It's led to a million and one opportunities, and we're living and sitting in one of them right now. But I want to talk about you today. Let's do that. Let's talk about the Trey Tips Tipton story. You can Google like you were about to say Trey Tips Tips, wasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> There's about seven thousand gigs of content of those on the screen. We could probably just roll those on AA for about You'll figure like, out everything six about years. for a month. Yeah, but um. Yeah, man. Your time at Pitt, obviously, people know the story. If, if you don't know the story, I would just recommend this. Maybe we'll put some links. Let's let's build out who is Trey Tipton. Wow. Okay? So we're going to, in the description below, if you're watching this right now, okay, I want you to stop watching this, but I don't want you to just shut it off. I want you to go to the description, and I want you to watch the first video that's in the description. What is that video? Man, first video in that description. Is it is it your highlight tape? Is it a video from your social? What do they need to know about Trey Tipton, like, at your core? What video do you think represents that the most? Or is there one? I don't think there is one, to be honest okay, with you. Okay, so don't go to that video link yet. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to build that video link. All right. Because... Everybody, like, I try to explain your story, and there's 15 different ones on the internet. Mm -hmm. There's one that was shot by ESPN, and then they were like, man, he's overcome so much. And then there's one, like, marked a year later, and it's like, man, you thought that was some shit? Check this out now. <laughs> and it's like, you've been going through, and I'm not trying to, like, make you relive and tell the stories right now on the podcast. There's right. already platforms that have interviewed you. You tell your story, you know, and I think every time you tell your story, it it takes you back there. Oh, for sure. I mean, I know when people ask me about my story, it, you know, it's real to you. So it's impossible not for you to mentally go there right. in some capacity. But I also don't want people to only think that's your story. Right. There's so much more to it. Shit ton. And so um, maybe that's what we should talk about. Let's talk about it. I don't know what to ask you, though. <laughs> Jesse, you got all the fucking questions in the world. Ask me something. <laughs> no, I mean, am I? Am I? I'm just being honest right now. Yeah. Because so, I don't know how to explain Trey to people other than like when I show them yeah. his videos. Okay, that'll be the first. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. Now you can click the link. This is the video <laughs> that you're talking about, the ESPN video. Right. Let's start with that. Okay. Okay. But that's not the whole story, right? Nah. So go watch that. And as soon as you are done watching that video. Come back to this timestamp on this episode, and we'll continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're back, Trey. They just watched the video. Yeah. Okay, if you didn't, go do it. Come on, yeah, like, dude. What are Why you are doing? you still here? <laughs> this is not going to make sense to you in the way that it needs to. If you don't go watch that video, follow to, rules. Actually. Okay? okay? Now go watch it if you haven't. <laughs> and if you have, welcome back again. <laughs> If you still have I swear it, to God, if you I haven't watched it, I swear, I swear to God, go watch that right now. 
Anyway, if you don't watch it right now, we're gonna box about it. Okay, I'm gonna show point. up. All three of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you've watched this video. Yeah. Welcome okay. back. Welcome back. <laughs> Talk Sweet about fans. that video. Man, so the, actually the video itself was crazy because I didn't even know I was doing the video until like lit- literally like the day of, right? So like people be like, well, you have so many things going on. A lot of people know a lot about you. Nine times out of 10. When I say nine times out of 10, it's like literally nine times out of 10. When you see videos of me or you see things of me, I didn't know or didn't find out until the day before or the day, like that day <laughs> specifically. So when they'd be like, yeah, just go in there and figure it out. Like, this is about me. You trying it's to not like you were meditating on what you were gonna say for no, like a week. No, and you just, no, none of that. Yeah, sounds familiar. I mean, yeah, just, it sounds like. Hey, I knocked on your door about twelve minutes ago. I was yeah. like, Trey, fifteen minutes. We're doing a pod. <laughs> Figure it out. I was like, oh, so we're back in college. Hey, All but right. this is working, right? This is cool. <laughs> this is how the elites do it. <laughs> Get with it. What's crazy is though, like they tell me this, right? And I'm walking through the, I'm walking through the uh, locker room. And when ESPN comes in, bro, they come ready. Like, their travel, mm-hmm. like, stuff that they're ready for, bro, is unlike any other people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like, they had it's this. whole crazy production. Bro, full crazy production. They wanted to create a scene, so they had a dude standing on top of me with, like, a, a light, spinning the light around my head. <laughs> I'm like, hey, cuz, like, what are we doing? And then they had this, like, little movement camera thing, like, where, you like, literally the camera would slide on its own. Mm-hmm. And then it would move backward, yep. forward. I was like, how much did that cost? They said more than a mortgage. I said, yeah, I'm broke. Damn. Like, I couldn't afford none of <laughs> You're this. You're in college, yeah, dude. That I mean, like, I'm in college. But, like, yeah. then we get into the story. But the one weird thing I can say, like, we do it here where we have to stare down the pipe, right? Like, you have to look at the camera. But, bro, their camera gets, like, this close to your face yeah. and then goes out. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It had no preparation. Zero preparation. We get into the story, man. They was like, yeah, we want you to be honest, as honest as you could be, mm-hmm. as thorough as you could be. And I was like, all right, now nah, I'm just letting you know. Like, <laughs> Did they know what they were getting themselves into? No, by so, far like, not. What, what sparked the, Like, They're like, all right, we're going to go in and do some mic some players up. And then Trey's like, <laughs> get this Trey Tipton guy. Buckle off, dude. <laughs> nah, because uh, what happened was. Um, wait, did you already win your award at this point? So at this point, right, had not won the award. Okay. Right? So like. My coaches had put something out there. It was like, yo, this kid's he- hella inspirational. Let's get him out there. ESPN caught win. Seen a video that I had done previously and was like, we're going to come in and interview the kid. I did the interview during mental health month, so I had to be in May. Did the interview, right? And then I just warned him. I was like, listen, bro, like, this ain't for the faint of heart. Like, I'm just being honest with you. Like, if you got a real problem with trauma, like, you shouldn't, we shouldn't do this. You know what I mean? Like, and he was like, no, nah, I think that, well, she was like, we need to do this. So we ended up doing it. They had it all set up, man. Their, their product, she, everything that they had set up, man, they did a really good job with the production, the producing of it. But I'm talking about when I tell you five to six cameras everywhere we went, we went to a bridge. We are in the middle of North Shore, stopped cars. Like, it was a good time, right? I had a great time. But in that experience, man, like, I really started to learn on how I felt about my story. Because there's a difference, right? When you're telling a story, you're not really thinking about how you feel about it. Was that like the first time you've publicly shared that story? or Yeah. Like that was the first time I knew it was going to go national news. You know what I mean? So like for me, there were some parts to me that was kind of extreme. Honestly, no, not even some. There was a lot of parts of me that was extremely uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like extremely uncomfortable. Because it's like, yo, like I'm putting me out there in a way in which that like there's no hiding. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm admitting to people, which some people at the time would say that that's a weak move to want to kill yourself, right? I'm admitting to millions of people that that was me, not just once, multiple times. So in that moment, like at first, bro, even you can see it on the screen, you can't tell, but I know. Like my chin, I'm chattering like I'm fucking freezing. I'm not freezing, I'm just nervous as Yo, shit. Yo, explain that feeling, because I've, I've had that feeling a few times in my life. Right. And like, it's nerve related for sure but man it, you can't i mean that we just talked about it last week actually right. like that happened to me after that dude popped up with the knife and yeah. I, my, my knee was like jumping bro it's mm. extreme anxiety all at once like I, I don't even know how to explain it it's like it's when anxiety hits you unexpectedly mm-hmm. it's like it was alive inside of you and then something just scared the shit out of it and Literally. it was just like whoa it like, like doesn't <laughs> have anywhere to go like i'd have been better off if i had to like fight that guy with the knife no, for sure. Like internally. Because you reacted. Because I, I mm-hmm. like had the internal structure built up to do whatever I had to do, mm-hmm. and then nothing happened. And it's like, what do we do now? Man. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, bro, <laughs> because, like, I'm just picturing it. And, like, I watch the camera go from back there. And as the camera is slowly coming towards me, bro, I feel every piece of anxiety in my body yeah. just open up. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about, like, just open up. And then the camera's here. And I'm like... <sighs> You could probably see yourself in the reflection of mm-hmm. it. Bro, like, looking at me, look yeah. at this camera, yeah. bro. So, like, it was an experience for Damn. sure, man. Like, it definitely threw me because if you've never been on camera before, like, it's different when we get on camera here because we have the control of what's being put out there. Mm-hmm. That is true. You know what I'm I think saying? I, I, the more, <laughs> that's actually scary because the more I get comfortable with the fact that, like, if I say something and I'm not cool <laughs> with it, I'm just like, hey, we're going to not post that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've done it several times, whereas now I've been doing, like, guests on other people's podcasts mm. and then the podcast comes out and i'm like oh yeah i can't ask him to edit that out uh-huh, uh-huh. i mean full transparency maybe we could talk about this too and i don't want this to be about me at talk all about i, I want to go back to your episode or you know like make this about you and continue telling your story um but i was on a podcast recently and i felt like some kind of way after being on it like i felt really i revisited some of the places mentally mm-hmm. that I, I I had overcome mm-hmm. and like that I don't live in anymore. Right. But in telling those stories, it took me back to them. And you lived and, it. And I felt, but not only did I, yeah, when you say you lived it, it's almost like, you know, they, they say your brain and I'm not a psychologist. So I don't know how your brain works, but like they say that your brain has like these neuro, you know, pathways Transmit, yeah. and transmitters and yeah, I don't yeah. know, I'm just saying yeah. key words right now that I think make sense. No, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of people that talk about this shit and act like they know what they're talking but we're about. Not act I ain't like never that. opened up someone's head and looked at the way a brain works. Have you? No. Have you? No? All right, so you're with me. Jesse has. That's kind of weird you have. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, if anybody would have. <laughs> Jesse's like, dude, yeah. yeah maybe me. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've used human brain in shoes before. <laughs> yeah. But, um, reverse engineering. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how the brain works, but all I do know is that, like, when you revisit those those places like and you tell those stories it's almost like you actually think and react as if you still have that mental construct Mm -hmm. so when i'm asked questions on this show and i'm telling this story of how i was like my life got flipped upside down like my family was moving to pittsburgh i wasn't sure what i was going to do and i just laid this canvas down and started painting right you know i remember the like hurt and like deep sense of Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do right. with my life. Right. Um, did I just like lose everything? Right. You know, and then knowing that, no, I didn't, but I got a lot of work to do right, right. now. So this is scary. Mm-hmm. And I remember that feeling. And so I'm telling that story. Mm-hmm. And then I'm asked about that story. And, and he asked me how much would I sell the painting for that right. I did in that moment. Right. And looking back, and, I, and I've talked to Jesse, I've talked to everybody in this room, swing, kick. Tyler as well. Um, I've talked to Brian. I mean, it, it, it weighed deeply on me. Right. Um, and so, you know, I was just, I was unable to give him like a price point because I was like, well, you know, how much is my pain and suffering worth? Right. Like, I don't know how much is my soul? How much mm. is my, right. that's what that piece is to me. And he's like, yeah, but if, if it's about the piece, then like, the pain and suffering was for nothing. Right. If you could sell that piece, he's you know he's like hypothetically he's like if you could sell that piece for five hundred thousand dollars, right? Wouldn't that then justify the pain and sorrow that you felt in that moment and mm-hmm. the overcoming of that to get to the other side of it? And and in the podcast, because I'm in my in my old school thought process of like victim and like right. hurt and you know whatever. I innately go to, how dare you, you know, make me, I didn't say this on the podcast, but, that's how but you felt. I'm thinking like, how dare you make me put a price tag on something like that? Right. Mm-hmm. And I've just like really been thinking and reflecting on that. I wonder if I truly had healed from that, if I would have told that story, not returned there mentally, and then on the show just been like, yeah, right. I could sell that. Because it's like, what is my attachment to that piece? Right. Is it because, like, do I want to stay stuck in my pain right. so badly that I wouldn't buy my mom a house? Mm. Mm, you talking now. Like, Go ahead, Vinny. Keep going. I'm listening. You got me into it right now. Go ahead. Well, it, it's, I, I, your story is similar. No, 100%. Because 
you've had to overcome that. You, it, a lot of people get the Disney Spirit Award, make the documentary on ESPN, and then for the rest of their life, they tell that sad story. Yeah. Mm. And you, my friend, have not done that. Yeah. You speak about life. You speak about um, all these things. And the last thing that your last go-to is that, hey, I won the Disney Spirit Award. You don't lead with – people lead with their, mm -hmm. their trauma story. Mm -hmm. You lead with, no, I'm Trey Tipton, and I'll punch you in the face. Like <laughs> – if I, <laughs> but I'll also give you a hug. A hug. Yeah. And it's like depending on which one I decide, you probably need one into the other. One or the other. <laughs> They're both for you because I love you. Right. And so, I just want to say that, man. Like I, I can relate not in the sense of your story because right. I haven't been through your story, but I can relate to when someone puts a camera in your face and makes you return to that story. Um, how that makes you feel. Right. That anxiety. That that welling up inside. So I don't want to do that to you here on the pod because this, again, I'm doing basically what ESPN did to him where I'm like, hey, let's do a podcast. And I'm like, let's tell all these stories about your life. <laughs> nah, man, it's cool though. Um, but I, I, want to, I want to shape that for people. Well, yeah, I want to give like, so just to highlight, because both of you kind of like tied this together here. I want you guys to like give your perspective on this before we get past it. But you are correct. And obviously I am no expert in this, but yes, you're correct. Like there are neural pathways that you have that essentially store memories, feelings, and thoughts in your brain 100%. deep away. No matter how much healing you do, like there's, it's still there. And you could activate those through situations of what you guys went through. But what I want you guys to highlight, and I don't think a lot of people get this perception. They see somebody on TV and it's a must be nice or, uh, or a woe is me angle, right. whatever it is. But like when you were reliving those neural pathways where you're like going down this memory lane not only are you doing it internally but you're doing it on air which is very unique and in trace situation it's getting streamed to god knows how many could be millions of people and it's for a lifetime yours is also a lifetime as well so like i think you guys have a connection here in the fact that you guys were both and this is in no intention of the the interviewer right but you guys you know on air had to relive memories and you know you're you're jumping into that space as you're speaking through it so like what does that feel like to talk about that and now look at what you do now you're paid to speak on a microphone you know this is your career so you're gonna do it again you know if you so choose to but like i think it's important to like understand that so just give some insight on like that and especially because it's raw human nature you could fight it all you want but, but like, it's gonna happen. you could mask it, but your brain's in that spot 100%. whenever you were struggling and you were struggling. So, like, what does that feel like? I well, think that's really interesting. I think what people misconstrued often, bro, and this is the thing, like, when you go through a tough time, when they look at mental health and people who talk about what they're going through, they act like you already got it figured out. Mm -hmm. And then after that, every time after that moment in your life, you're supposed to have it figured like, out. Like, oh, you, you almost committed suicide and you didn't? Wow, you're in mental health. Like, yeah, you got bro. it all figured yeah, out, bud. Bro, Tell us what we need to know. Like, that's, like no, I, I, I'm yeah. still I going through life. do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, for real. Uh, that's, we, yeah. No, nah, that's honesty. Like, if I'm being real, like, you make a decision. That's what people forget about, right? Everybody thinks everything's supposed to be a specific way. It's black or white. Unfortunately, life doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Life is extremely gray. Love that. Extremely gray. I hate that it's gray, but it is extremely yeah. gray. So with that said, though, you got to understand, man, as you go through life, bro, you're not going to have it figured out. In those moments, yes, I talked to people about when I went through. 100,000%. Mm -hmm. It's my life, right? But the reason why I was so comfortable is because it's not what I'm going through. It's what I went through. Mm -hmm. It's not what I'm going through. It's what I went through. There's a fucking difference. You got to understand when somebody's going through something, especially when somebody's going through a mental health situation, right? A mental health crisis. Those people who you look at, it could be on TV, Simone Biles, right? Let's, let's talk about it. We want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Michael Phelps, right? Mm -hmm. Because they've come out and talked about their story. Now, people are assuming every time they're going through something, <laughs> they have that shit figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is not true. Yeah. Here's the, because this, this is life, right? You ready? You know the reason why you get upset and why you have traumas? It's because it's new relived experiences. Even though in that moment, it's something that happened to me. In that moment, it was the first time that I fully relived the experience. Mm -hmm. So, like, what people forget to understand, bro, as humans, bro, we grow as time goes. Mm -hmm. There's new things that come to us as, times, as time goes. You're not going to have it figured out. As a human being, you have a subconscious. What does that mean? That means that your conscious and your subconscious are not on the same fucking plane. Mm -hmm. 
So there's ideas, there's thoughts, there's things that come from left field and you don't have that control. Mm -hmm. So now it's about what do you do when it happens, right? I know how to maintain. I know how to work through. I know how to talk about these things 100%. But when something initially happens to me, do not assume I got it figured it out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like for that example, you talk about when you go into that space, right? People talk about it. Like when somebody asks you a real deep question and you get that anxiousness, you almost go into a zone where you look into the universe, right? I like to think of it as Jamie Neutron when he says brain blast. <laughs> brain blast. And then all them shits happen, the neurons yeah. and stuff start coming yeah. together and then you actually see the image. No cap, bro. I feel like that's the truth when you're reliving your experiences. Because in that yeah. moment, you weren't ready for that. You weren't even ready to think about that. You probably haven't thought about that in so long because yeah. some people do the same thing that I did. Mm -hmm. They take those moments and use their life like a beach volleyball. And then talk about this too. Like, so now that you've overcome that shit, right? Something comes up in your life. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're going through that, you know, whether it be something related in sports, whether it be an injury, right. a loss of a loved one, a, you know, a relationship coming to an end. Now I feel like I'm Tyler on Honey, I'm Home right now. <laughs> but like, shout out to our guy. If you haven't watched his podcast, go check it out. Tag, Tyler tag, Joe tag. Stratton on uh, YouTube and all the other platforms. Uh, Honey, I'm Home's a great show. And, I've been. A, have you been on it yet? Yes, you've been on it, Jesse. You've been on it mm -hmm. too. So go mm -hmm. if you guys enjoy our show. Go check it out. Look up our episodes. That'll be the next link in the bio. But mm -hmm. don't watch that one yet. We'll watch that one after yeah. this. Actually, that'll be the last link. <laughs> don't click that one yet. Um, because I'm enjoying this conversation for sure. And um, no matter what you go through, once you go through it once, like you said, that's a, I want people to take home what you just said. Um, they think you're equipped to go through it again. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you lose your dad mm -hmm. at a young age, mm -hmm. your mom at a young age, mm -hmm. when you lose your other parent, you should probably be mentally prepared to go through it, right? Mm -hmm. Hell no, you ain't. But exactly. You would think so. But people, right. people understand that at a like life and death level, right? right? But when it comes to like, oh, you know, you got a divorce right. and it ripped up your life right. or you got, um, you know, you you got kicked off a team. I'm right. trying to relate to like, do we have an audience of like high school kids that are playing sports? I got elementary kids that play football <laughs> watching this show yeah. and all the way up to like our demographic goes up to like 40, 50. So there's a wide range of people that watch the show. I don't know what life phase you're in because, but I, another, we're really fucking stacking points on this one. But like another sub point to this is that like the problems that you feel in 11th grade are just as valid as the problems you feel as a 50 year old person come on it's all and, relative and and it's all relative to your life and come so on. if you're watching this and you're like oh you know getting kicked off of a football team or not making a football team in middle school is not similar to you know having a failed marriage in your 50s and it's like 100%. those feel the same yeah, yeah they do when it and, happens and it's like now people look at those right and we will understand on like the life and death aspect of like yeah every time you lose a loved one close to you you should mourn right mm -hmm. but every time you know, you're reminded or you have to live through anything in life mm -hmm. twice. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you're equipped because each situation is unique. It's a new paradigm shift of your life. It's a new lens that you're seeing life right. through. There's new information. There's new pathways. There's new relationships. There's new everything in your mm -hmm. life. So no situation is the same twice. No. So nobody's an expert on exactly what you're going through except for you. Come on. And if you want to get through it, you gotta do it. You have to do the work. You mm -hmm. can listen to Trey's story and be like, "Man, that's inspiration. How he over, you know, right. came all of that." I want to be more like Trey. No, you need to be more like you. Come on. But you're not confident in that mm. because you haven't done the work. Mm. And I'm, I'm talking to myself on the podcast, right? <laughs> <The one that's laughs> I'm talking to myself on the podcast that I was all butthurt about. Come on. Mm -hmm. You know? No, nah, for real, bro. I was. I was I look back on that and and I'm like, man, I needed to do work. And he called me higher on that show. Mm -hmm. And I did the work since that show. Mm. And I'm not proud of the way I acted or responded on the show. Not that I did anything bad. It's just like I wish I would have engaged that conversation right. from a different lens. Right. But I didn't. And mm. because I didn't, I watched the film, literally, mm. and now I'm better. Mm, you know what you just and did? And now if anybody wants to buy that painting for 500 grand, hit me up. <laughs> but you know what you just did? You just held yourself accountable. And a lot of people want to play this victim mindset nowadays with mental health, and I can't get down. It's not for me. Because there's a difference. When I talk about what I'm going through, I'm not talking about what I'm going through for you to feel sympathy for me. It's for you to have empathy for me. There's a difference. It's to understand. Because it's not for me. It's for the next person. 
Mm-hmm. I speak to the existence of, like, I got to speak about it to feel better about it. But it's not just for me. It's for somebody else out there going through mm-hmm. it. So let's talk about it, right? The reason why I can't understand the victim mentality, because although I went through it, motherfucker, I'm still here. <laughs> Don't get it chopped. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it misconstrued. I'm still here. I'm still breathing. So no, I'm not a victim of life. I'm a warrior of life. There is a difference. I do not like this new generation of pat on the back. It's okay to just not be okay. It is okay not to be okay. Don't get it twisted. It's okay to be in pain. It's okay to cry. It's okay not to feel good. But it is not okay to quit. Mm. When you start quitting on yourself, (laughs) it becomes a bad habit. Yeah. And we have a real bad habit right now in America of allowing people just to quit on life. I'm not that type of being. If you see me coach, (laughs) you know I'm not that type of being. So even with that within myself, I had to be my own hero. What does it look like to go through a hero story? Yeah. Have you ever seen any story in the history of time where the hero just went through life easy? Let's mm. Think about it. No. Has there ever been a superhero in the, in the history of time that has had an easy life? No, mm. because it wouldn't make a great story. Mm. The reason why everybody loves a superhero is because everybody can relate. There's not going to be a single time in your life where things just go easy. Doesn't matter what religion you're in. Let's, yeah. We want to talk. Let's talk. You want. Doesn't matter what religion you're in. Any prophet that you ever looked up, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's Hinduism, whether it's Christianity or being Muslim, the prophet had went through something mm-hmm. and had came out and survived it. That's life. You're not a victim. You're a warrior. You got to learn to fight back against yourself. You got to learn the things you don't like about yourself and then go to work. Go to the whiteboard. Bro, there's times where I literally sit myself back and ask myself, what don't you like? Like, really, what don't you like about you right now? What don't you like about you right now? Right now, I'll be honest with you, what I really don't like about me right now is that, like, I'm getting consistent, but I'm still inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why I say I'm inconsistent. I'm inconsistent in the sense of, like, emotionally, because there's been a lot of things that's happened to me and just honestly, four, three to four years that most people wouldn't go through in a year. Mm-hmm. And that's just me being honest with myself. There's trauma that catches up that hasn't had time to be dealt with. Mm. Right. Let me explain, because this happens to people, I believe. It's when you go through one thing and you're working through that one thing, and then another thing happens. Mm-hmm. So now you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I work through this thing? But this thing hasn't been healed yet. It's like ADHD trauma where you're just like, that bad thing happened. But, oh, mm-hmm. look at this shiny bad thing. Seriously. It's like, I forgot about that bad thing so until you, you loop back around. So it. you know what I started yeah. doing? And this is the reason why I said I'm getting consistent, but I'm not consistent yet. What I started to do is I started to realize when I'm starting to think like that, right? It's like, whoa, slow down. When you're getting ahead of yourself. Yeah, yeah. slow down. Because reality is, it's like, I'm not that bad. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> if I'm keeping it real, like I look at myself and I have to literally treat myself like I was talking to Vinny. Yeah. I got to mm-hmm. treat myself like I'm talking to Jesse. Yeah. I got to treat myself like I'm talking to Kickler. Because if I don't, I know I'm going to be too critical on me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I spend 365, 24 7 with me. So of course I'm going to be critical on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you find those people who have no faith in anything, right? No faith at all, they're not only critical on themselves, right? Mm-hmm. They also don't believe in themselves. So if you have no belief in yourself and you're critical on yourself, you know what that causes? Hmm. Depression. Damn, dude, you're saying some shit right now. It's an identity crisis, too. It's an identity crisis. Yeah. And, and this is the thing, though. When you can't ID you and you live with you, <sighs> who? how can you ID anything? How can you see anything, bro? Yeah. You have no faith in anything. No. You have no faith. You can't see. You are literally living behind a mask. I don't have time for a facade because I don't like you that much. Mm. <laughs> you ain't hear what I said. I don't have time to give you the fake me. Because I don't like you that much. I love me. Mm-hmm. What I'm currently going through, as much as I want to hide it, bro, this pretty face can't. It's impossible. So when that happens, bro, I got to be honest with myself and the people that I trust about where I'm at. Does that mean I'm defeated? No. Does that mean that it's over? No. It means that I'm currently going through a situation. That's like telling somebody, right, they're in the middle of a fight. Hands are up, getting punched on and everything. To tell them to stop fighting in the middle of it and think about what you got going on at home. Mm. I ain't worried about that shit. Mm. I'm getting knocked out by this man right here. That's the same thing when you're going through something. You're expecting somebody to be perfect and walk into a situation like nothing happened when the world is ending on their back end. Mm. That's why as men specifically, now here, now I'm getting for real, for real. You ready? Let's go. Is everybody ready? I'm nervous, but let's go. All right, here we go. <laughs> it is very difficult because... Men in this world are responsible for almost 99.9 of crime in the world, right? 
Here's even the worst part. You ready for this? Here we go. But we also don't have men telling other men that we love them. Mm-hmm. We also got men other, and other men talking to other men about what they're going through. Mm-hmm. And when you find that collective of people, right, because you have to find it. It's not an easy pocket to find. Not everybody's trustworthy. You understand me? Yeah. But you have to do the work on you to find those pockets of people. That's the work. And, and that's the hard work because if you just accept the pocket of people that are in your life, you're going to look at it and be like, well, how am I supposed to get out of this? You're not. You're not going to get out of it. <laughs> you're just not. So, like, you, that's the work we're talking about. Everybody, like, when you say, like, you got to do the hard work, they're like, they think you need to sit in an empty room and just be like, oh, maybe you do. <laughs> like, maybe you need to pray. Maybe Probably. you need to, like, get on your knees and actually, like, beg God to, like, open your eyes to something that's right in front of you. But I think doing the work is literally making a phone call and being like, hey, man, I appreciate everything, but, like, I can't go to that place anymore with you. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I appreciate our relationship and everything that it's taught me, but, like, I'm not in love with you. And, Mm -hmm. like, here's why. And people stay in relationships that – it it blows my mind when people are in relationships with people and they're like, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Right, right. I'm just like, what are you, what are you doing? doing, dude? <laughs> like, Pray, bro. now if you're married, figure that shit out. Yeah, come okay? on. Okay, but like, you should have figured that shit out before, before you got married. married. Yeah. Because <laughs> guess what? When it gets the worst, now I will say, marriage is very hard, dude. Mm. I mean, there are days where like me and Lindy, you know, we we are so sick of each other, right? That it's just like it's better off for us to just not talk today, right? That's the reality of marriage, right? But like. At the end of the day, dude, that's my wife. Mm. And I don't care if we have the worst day of our life. I'm jumping in front of a bus for her, Mm. like, Mm. immediately. So imagine this. So it's like, if people don't understand, Imagine what you just said. Why are you in a relationship if you're not married and you're not sure if you... (laughs) But Vinny, Mm -hmm. think about Mm -hmm. what you just said, bro. You got time to figure it out, but, like, once you've figured it out, why are you still there? But Mm -hmm. listen, watch this. Ready? This really is Honey, I'm Home. Perspective. Honey, I'm Home. Tyler Joe Strachan. You got to go check it out. Honey, I'm Home. So this is what you got to think about, though. (laughs) That relationship, that hard marriage, they talk about this, right? And I really just seen this the other day. They said, in the past, right, the reason why love has changed. This is the reason why they said love has changed. And Tyler, we'll talk about this later. They said, in the past, people found reasons to stay. Mm -hmm. In recent, people find reasons to leave. Mm. That's hard. I said, we're going to bring this back, right? Here it comes. Curveball, same relation, or same relationship with yourself. You got to find reasons to be happy. If you sit there and you look at every single negative thing at your partner, what the fuck you think is going to happen? Yeah. You're going to have a divorce. Yeah. It's going to get ugly. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? What's the divorce of yourself? Mm, come on. What's that look like? What's it's it look like? It's depression and it's suicidal thoughts come on and you're not even because you're like i don't know how to escape myself i can't you can't divorce yourself you can just leave this world but guess what if you believe there is something past this world you still don't leave yourself Mm -hmm. you don't you lose this experience Mm -hmm. and that's probably like the saddest thing is when you are in this one of a life one life opportunity that you have and you can't see it as that Mm. you can't see that like You'll never, we will never record this podcast again. Mm -hmm. This episode, this day, today, with you sitting there, with Kick over there, rolling on his phone. (laughs) Shout out, Kick. Love you, bro. (laughs) Creating graphics. This show is looking better and better every single week because of the work you guys put in behind the scenes. So, can we give them a round of applause real quick? Because Kick did his thing today. Yep. Shout out to Studio. Hell yeah. All plugged in and, and swing, sorry. And uh, new new cords. We're, we've been streaming, trying to get up to 4K, and we've actually had a cord that fried. We had to, so we're we're up and we're up working and too hard. I just didn't want people to think I was taking a shot at Kick but, over there because he's working really hard. What, so what I want to do it, though yeah. is like kind of just tie everything together because I don't even know if you guys realize what you just did there. Um, so what's the end goal of a happy life in business and life in general? Is it the end goal? No, it's the journey. Correct. So if that's the case, then is the end goal to be fully healed with never having to experience a downfall again? I don't think so either. It's all of it's the falling in love with the journey. Now, I want to be careful in prefacing that, like, you don't want to fall in love with consistent suffering, but you fall in love with the stories and the lessons you learn. And the fact that you guys were just be able to have a rattle off a conversation where you're able to deeply connect and most every listener that listens to this is going to connect with that as well. 
you don't get that without the valuable lessons of struggling and suffering. Now, it's all for how you interpret that. When you do take that trip down those neural pathways, you could either look at those images of the past and cry, or you could say, this is something that it's like a museum of you inside of you. And you teach people from that. So. Mm, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Oh, shut up. Hold on, man. <laughs> if you ain't know, this is Jesse Woods. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to call him Jesse Woods up to no good. And the reason why I say that, man, is because like what he just said is so inspirational, even for myself, because think about all the things you went through to be where you're at right now. Yeah, and yeah. if you're not it's happy valuable. where you are right now, then you ain't learned shit. Yeah. You so can't pay for shit like that. You can't. But the best thing that you said about that, Jesse, the number one thing that I took away from what you said Life is about choices. Mm -hmm. When you, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe that everything happens to you or for you is up to you, but life is about choices. You have a choice to be upset for how long. Yep. You have a choice to, to go and get what you want in life, but you have to make that decision. There goes yep. another choice to go do that. And it's hard because things do happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Times do get hard. We do have times where we want to sit down and cry, and that's okay. It's absolutely okay. But, but with that said, at some point in time, when will you decide that I get a chance to be happy? Because if you don't decide that, you, there's not a father that you can blame. There's not a mother you can blame. There's not a spouse you could blame. Mm. Because here's the thing. You make the choice to stay with these people. You make the choice to talk to these people. You make the choice to be around these people. With that said, how hard are you willing to go for your happiness? Mm -hmm. Genuinely. Yeah. How hard? I said this statement the other day, and it was, this has nothing to do about what we're talking about right now, but it'll make sense. I was talking about the pre-draft, how guys work their asses off for two months before their biggest day of their lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There you go. But you haven't done that work all season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, because you haven't done that work all season, right, your film in this moment don't fucking match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now they're looking at you like, ah, oh, he's a seventh round guy when you were supposed to be a second round. Mm -hmm. Bro, because you haven't been participating in your dream this whole time. Yeah. Let's bring it back to life, V. Because they're focused on the destination of the draft, yeah. not on the process, the process of getting better. Enjoy and the journey. Up. That's it. Boom. So like with that said, right, you haven't taken time on the journey. Let's bring it back to people, okay? Right now, we're talking about our biggest dreams, where we want to go. What does your biggest dream look like? What does your happiness look like? If you do not practice on handling adversity right now in your life and handling yeah, on it. your emotions, even when you get to success, you won't appreciate it. Yeah. You won't get there, dude. You cannot get to the biggest, like, whatever the goal or vision you have for your life. Like, maybe that's what we could do is, like, if you're watching this, you know, if you've maneuvered through this video, you went and watched Trey's video. If you still haven't, <laughs> we told you. We're okay. showing up. If you hear a knock at your door, it's us. <laughs> it's Trey with some boxing gloves. Trey's immediately just boxing. Just a deer. Just <laughs> Deer, we're sending, the, we're sending the deer, our deer army to your house. Trey and the deer team up for this one. <laughs> Dude, they work our, together. I, I've always wanted like a listener name. I mm. think we create like deer army or like yeah, um, or like the hunters. It has to be the hunters because here's why. Vinny and I, for some reason, the deer in Pittsburgh do not mess with us. Trey, I, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't Go know ahead. what it is. Go ahead. Well, did we just talk about it? Did you hear about this this morning? Uh, wait, wait, you oh, called yeah, me. I did call you. You I, called dude, me I was, the I was It's your choice so of how you relive it. I, yeah. I how didn't know that this? I called you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. So there's going to be retaliation coming to your house. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wore red and blue today because I'm like, I don't want anybody to know what side I'm on. Look, I'm telling you right now, Carhartt, Carhartt. These deer ain't playing out here, dude. Carhartt like, and John Deere might hire us, bro. Let me tell you why. Because these deer in this neighborhood, I don't think people understand it. I know we're getting far off from where we were, but this is our podcast. We do what we want. I had a traumatic experience. My this man morning. Vinny is struggling this morning. <laughs> this is perfect because it's Bambi, all up to dude. how you relive I this. killed Bambi. Uh, yep. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Here we go. That might be the new segment. Yeah. Talk about Talk it. Talk about it. <laughs> it's something crazy. Talk about, Talk about it. Talk about it. Eh, eh, eh. What happened? <laughs> yeah, it was all funny. You talking about boxing these deer. I, I don't think I should talk about it because you box the deer's brains out of its body <laughs> Dude, with my car with the car <laughs> driving what it's not funny hold on no 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 no, 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 no. it's not but it, it, i'm actually traumatized by it and that I shows bad. that he's a good human i'm by the still way. laughing because i haven't probably i'm gonna sometimes cry you gotta the, laugh at I'm trauma gonna just cry the entire way home hey you gotta laugh at trauma sometimes it was so sad dude i i hit a deer with my car and this episode's dedicated to that deer i'm trying my hardest not to laugh right now i ain't gonna lie because in my eyes like 
I, I love animals, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm like, dude, if I hit a squirrel, I'm like, oh, right. no. I feel yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Can I? Can I? Uh, I yeah. Okay. I For what whatever do, reason, so. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Deer sometimes just like, they don't think. Like, I know you see all these cars coming. Deer in headlights. And I'm talking about flying. They're, like, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It ain't like it was just five cars and Vinny yeah. just happened to be the only car there. No, there was a lot of cars moving. I've had a deer hit my yeah, car. Yeah, but bro, like, have you seen deer come out of the womb? They're just like, all right, we're alive. We're ready. Let's yeah. go. Well, you got to think about it. Let's go. Like, like, they don't just come out and they're like, mama, hold yeah, me. Like, yeah. they're literally out and just alive. Like, so, that's... When you, like, we, we've hacked nature, though. Like, survival the, the nature doesn't have cars fittest. just driving in it, like, in, <laughs> in the woods. You know what I mean? So we... Nature. Yeah, that was we probably did. the first car it had ever seen. Probably. And it was mine. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> it, was the last it, one. It, well. it was a week old. It was the first and the last one it ever seen in its life. But <laughs> yeah, here's, I, the thing. Yeah. here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. It's okay, man. It's okay. It's good. You got to laugh through it. Because I'm going to laugh for this reason. His cousins are at my crib right now. Mm. Plotting. Yeah, you're about to go home. And- <laughs> yeah, Trey's going to get jumped now. <laughs> so now I'm going to get jumped because you want to mess around and hit Bambi. Sorry, man. R.I.P. to Bambi. Sorry, right. he's gonna be all right. <laughs> yeah, but it is sad. But his family should watch this podcast and overcome. Yeah, they're gonna dislike drama. this podcast. <laughs> Honestly, I there's think no way they watch the link. thumbs down. Oh no, they they specifically did. You know what's funny though? It's not funny, but it's funny to me. And this is the reason why it's funny to me. For those of you who don't know me, I commentate on Discovery Channel. Oh, like I love funny. to do this. It's one of my favorite things to do when I'm by myself. It's funny. But here's <laughs> I mean, the thing. Please. I want to know what voices are yeah. talking. D- it depends. Trey, Damn, can you give man, us an example, scary. please? It depends yeah. because he hit this deer in McCandless. <laughs> so like, that's a suburban deer. Yeah. You feel me? So what would it sound like? Like as Honestly? It's, as it's about to get hit, like it's like what's its thoughts before? <laughs> and like I want you to go through the like just the last 15 seconds of its Pit, yeah. like, what do you think it was? Very thinking? sad life. So let me paint the picture for you. Yeah, okay, go paint for the it. picture. Let me, yeah, let me think right, about give this. Give me your phone. <laughs> what you about to do with this thing? I'm going to show you. These are our cars. Okay. okay. So there's cars lining up. Are we in the wide shot? You see it? Yep, yep. So here's the barrier. Okay, here's the here's the barrier in the middle of the highway. Where, 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 okay? where? There's an open lane here. Open lane. So these cars, you know, we're driving like this. Like this car stops. Mm hmm. This car stops. Mm-hmm. This car stops. This car stops. This car stops. Right. I'm way back here. Right. So I, I just am stopped. Right. And there's nobody in this lane. So I'm like, what's wrong up here? Put on my blinker, turn, <laughs> get in this lane. And I'm like, huh, wide open highway. Right. Let's go. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> all, oh these, all these cars know oh my God. that I don't know that there's a deer right here, like in between the barrier, probably running next to this car. And this person is probably going, please don't run. Yeah, yeah. Aw, look at how sweet. And I'm just, I'm up to like 35, 40 mile an hour at this point. Like, why are these people stopped? And I stop wondering why they stopped. You Ray Lewis this deer. Oh. And I get to like right here, even with the front car, and this deer just goes, Froom, and and I just go, Broom. gone. <laughs> and I I ran over the deer, and it was a baby, and it barely did it. Like I have like some fur in my like my ta- my car is not even I You're traumatized. Traumatized. That's what's well, what good. That so what, it, what was soul. he saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he got always... to this part, and he was like here running back and forth. What's I'm not he gonna saying? lie. I feel bad because in his head, like, he's probably like, okay, like, I'm safe. I just got to get past these cars, and I'm going into the woods. That's all I got to do is get past these cars. He doesn't know what a car is. And then I'm going through the woods. He doesn't know what a car is. You don't know that. You don't know how old Bambi was? He was young. Like, young, young? (laughs) Like, two days old. (laughs) Like, two days old, young? Tiny, bro. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if he was thinking about anything. I can't That's lie. what I'm saying. I Somebody think he was like, where the bears No, no, no. Yeah. no, no <laughs> like, no, is this a bush? No. Not no, on the concrete. No. This is, bad. this is bad parenting. Where's mom at? Where's mom at? We, mm. we ain't talking about this. You can't blame your parents, Trey. Watch the podcast. Hold on. Back. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> done There's the work. Accountability. There's a certain age. Okay? <laughs> certain Accountability. Age. Accountability. <laughs> what you want a Get two-year-old together, deer? Bambi. Not right. a two-year-old deer. A two-day-old I do go home and tell Lil' Vin. Like Get when together. he falls and ste- or steps on his toy, I'm like, yeah, you should have picked up those Legos. Yeah, accountability. 
Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, dad. <laughs> By the way, okay, when he's only two, <laughs> not even two years old. I love that voice. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. In my head, I think the little the little deer wandered off from the from the group. I guarantee mom has oh, said, hey, don't leave All the group. Right. Mm. It's just like when you get told as a kid, the she stove's said, hot. I told you. The stove's hot. <laughs> you yeah. put your hand on that stove, you're going to F around and find out. Yep. Yeah. And once you find out, what does your parents do? Hitch mm-hmm. his car. Get splattered now, by now, a car. Now, <laughs> now, there's a little bit different scenario. But I put money that Bambi's mom had told him, don't go down to that gray stuff. That, that gray, gray stuff. stuff. <laughs> that gray stuff. I'm pretty sure there. they're colorblind. He's like, oh, I don't know. Everything's gray. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gray. <laughs> Sounds like Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler's just out in the highway. Like, <laughs> Why? <laughs> what are these bushes what moving is going so fast on? for? <laughs> Bro, <I can't. laughs> oh, God. We got to watch Tyler and make that sure he exactly doesn't walk close to the said. street. <laughs> that deer said, Why is these bushes moving so fast? <laughs> oh. I don't know. I'm going to just go see what's in there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. oh, I mean, at least it was quick. I mean, the but, last thing you want to see is it struggling. You know what I think afterwards. we just did? I yeah. think we just like built we up everybody's mental time. health and destroyed it at the same time. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like mm. we, we welcome built to up. life. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up. Welcome to life. Buckle off, dude. Buckle up. This is athletic aesthetic, and we love you. See ya. <laughs> Were we ready to end it?